Hi, I'm Siddhant Manocha. I'm a final year student of BA Honours in Fashion Design and Technology at Paul Academy of Fashion New Delhi. I've been uh, here at this college for past four years. I'm a final year student and uh, I've carried out many projects along with college and outside college in the fashion week or uh, as a freelance designer. My basic design philosophy revolves around uh, saving the nature or sustainable collections. Along with that, I try and promote the Indian handicraft industry, which I believe is a very strong point India has. And um, but I even uh, try to pick up things which are uh, more global in terms of color and silhouettes, so that my product doesn't uh, restrict only to one country, which is India, and can be accepted by many people. What I believe is that India is a high held has been held as a seed uh, from a long time just sprouting right now and but the growth has been a little varied the money is not equally divided amongst all the uh, citizen of the country the decision making also rests only with the higher class or the uh, the upper strata of the society so uh, with my collection i've been trying to uplift even the craftsmen or the uh, poor people uh, who might benefit from the promotion of uh, such a collection uh, which promotes the handicraft. I believe Europe has a very strong uh, style statement uh, in terms of silhouettes and uh, cuts and India on the contrary holds a very rich art and handicraft sector. So uh, I've been trying to combine both the elements together to create a globalized collection. Uh, India uh, has stopped evolving lately because of commercialization and the fast growth and lack of patience amongst people uh, whereas the handicraft industry requires uh, patience and a lot of skill into it but because of the fast paced world the commercialization has creeped into it and it's been ruining the handicraft uh, since a long time With this collection i have picked up a primitive embroidery uh, technique uh, called fulkari which is from a very fertile land of uh, a country in India, it's, the state is called Punjab. Uh, but sadly over there, this, uh, the art and handicraft uh, industry has been uh, taken a back seat because the government allocation of funds have gone more towards the agriculture and the commercial textile part. So uh, just to uplift the, uh, this embroidery over there, I've tried to uh, work on it in my collection so that the craftsmen over there get benefited and uh, even the upcoming generations uh, feel the need of you know carrying on their uh, ancestral skill and developing it even further. What I'm trying to do is I'm, take, uh, I'm picking up the uh, traditional motifs from the embroidery which are very angular, structured and very uh, geometric. They're, very, uh, they're all based in a square and uh, since the embroidery uses the method of dance stitch which uh, goes only parallel to the uh, cross grain or the uh, salvage so all the angles are 90 degree in the embroidery so I have picked up the traditional motifs and I have uh, evolved them into a more futuristic and a more uh, smart manner which can even move out from the context of using uh, being used as a traditional embroidery and more into a contemporized form I've developed a uh, few samples over here of this embroidery uh, and I've even tried uh, to give it a laser cut over here just as a finish to the garment uh, and uh, I think uh, I can even uh, work with the colors over here but the, point, the whole point of making it as a global collection uh, would uh, refrain me from using more of colors uh, which can you know give the traditional feel to the embroidery while I've been trying to uh, evolve the embroidery full kari and make it more futuristic alongside I've also been uh, taking care of the fabrics and the colors that go into the collection I've been using a, a lot of organic cotton uh, in this I've uh, uh, seen the twill weave and the plain weave heavy cotton because I'm uh, trying to make a very structured collection, a very heavy collection so I've used heavy weights organic cotton fabrics in a raw form and in RFD form uh, which I'll be using for jackets, trousers and the whole uh, garment basically 
and also for the scarves. I uh, have uh, explored with natural dyeing using this book called, uh, by Jackie Crook which helps me uh, to uh, dye at home and I have also visited dyers in Jaipur to uh, get a brief about how the natural dyeing is done, uh, has been done uh, since the many years and how it is being carried out. Uh, I'll just uh, browse you through pictures how I've go gone through the whole process of dyeing uh, at home and uh, then I'll show you the samples that I've created. These were the way the colors were kept over there in the uh, dyer at the, uh, in Jaipur and uh, he was just uh, briefing me how the process is carried out and how in a very natural atmosphere they do it. There's nothing commercial about it. There's no machinery involved, only a man and his hands and a hot pot of water with dye. I tried dyeing at home with all the material and uh, that I was briefed about. Uh, I was uh, washing the cotton first and uh, then uh, making the dye baths in which the fabric had to be dipped. Uh, then the fabric was kept for around uh, for various time intervals of 5, 10, 40 minutes and the larger the time gap the darker would the fabric come out to be. And uh, the, uh, the indigo dye which I have used uh, also uh, gets darker with the exposure to sunlight and oxygen because it's initially green and then it turns out to be blue with the exposure to oxygen. And uh, the temperature also needs to be taken care of in the whole dyeing process. If you keep it above 50, it would kill the dye. Uh, this was the stage of uh, uh, making, uh, converting a raw fabric into RFD fabric because that was an added process. A raw fabric can give you a darker shade, a RFD fabric can give you a lighter shade. So these were the samples that I've produced. Uh, I've uh, tried to uh, keep the chemicals to the minimum. Uh, I've just used a caustic soda which is sodium hydroxide and uh, washing soda for RFD. And, uh, the, the, the first sample that I created came out to be very patchy and uh, because I didn't use uh, caustic soda which is sodium hydroxide initially just to avoid the chemical but then I realized that when I spoke to other dyers they told me that that is necessary so I tried developing some samples along with that and the result came out to be better but they told me since I'm dyeing a fabric so it, it would come out to be a little patchy but uh, that would add as a visual appeal to the collection I also dyed uh, the silk yarn which I would be using for the embroidery and uh, this was the one which was kept for a shorter time so it gave me a light shade and this was kept for a higher amount of time so it gave me a darker shade and alongside just for experimentation I also dyed my t-shirt in this uh, just to see how it comes out to be and uh, uh, the reason I chose indigo was because I had a less time and uh, lesser technical knowledge about vegetable dyeing and I was new to it. The other colors require more precise uh, temperature, humidity, climate and uh, specific uh, moderates that need to go in. And indigo was the safest bet to do the natural dye and the color was also very global being a very indigo blue which is accepted globally. So the reason that is the reason I stuck to indigo blue as a collection along with uh, some raw fabric which would create a wonderful a uh, combination of ecru and uh, indigo and uh, since I am using uh, all the natural uh, uh, ingredients into the collection so it's a very biodegradable very near organic collection and uh, it's also uh, as a, uh, my effort to reduce the global uh, uh, my carbon footprint because all the uh, processing happens at home or manually and there's very uh, less electricity involved and uh, only the uh, stitching thread would be polyester and a uh, little bit of chemical going in the dye, not, not more than that and uh, uh, even the uh, embroidery is happening in the state of Punjab which is just 200 miles from my uh, workstation so uh, overall like it wouldn't be uh, a very uh, expensive collection and uh, secondly the uh, it, it's all done manually and at home, so it would definitely reduce the carbon footprint of the whole collection. Thank you.